welcome to Sitting with Sally. Today, we're making wine. I have with me a winemaker, uh, Simo Lazarek, and we're going to make Baco Noir. All right. Hi, everybody. So this is the kit that we're going to be making today. Before I start making any wine, I'd like to uh, show you um, what do you need to make it. So and, and this is a very special kit because you won that kit for winning a gold medal for your Baco Noir. That's right, yeah. yeah that's it's exciting. Very this exciting. Is free. This is <laughs> better yet. Okay, so, so this is a, a winemaking kit. It's a winemaking kit, um, and it has everything you need to make wine from start to finish, uh, it, it, other than the bottles or the bags. Uh, so you got your fermenter, you got your uh, autosiphon, you got your spoon, you got your carboy, um, you got your sanitizer. Um, it's like Christmas, let's get into it. Yeah, everything. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna start unpacking this, just to show you guys what's in it. So the first thing is the sanitizer. That's what I use to sanitize my equipment. It's like a chlorinated detergent. You mix it with water? Yeah, you mix, yeah, about um, 3.5 grams per liter. Okay. This is to uh, sanitize your equipment, so it's ready to, uh, to put the juice in. This is a, a brand new carboy, plastic. I got a hose here. Okay. I got a wine teeth. This one is used to take samples of wine so you can measure gravity and take tastes. And this is your, uh, this is your fermenter. It's a solid white fermenter with a, a tight lid. Comes with it. And this is what the wine goes into first stage? Yeah, this is for the fermentation process. Usually, it doesn't have any hole, as you say, as you see here. So you can take a drill, a three-eighth of, uh, three of an inch drill, and, and put a hole here. So it looks like for that. For the airlock, which is this guy. And, and you that, got a rubber bunch. That allows? Allows uh, CO2 to escape without any oxygen to get get it in the wine okay. during the fermentation process. And this is the, the bunch that goes in here. So you gotta make a hole here to put this in, and then you put the airlock on. Great. And you fill up the water halfway. And your airlock is ready. This, this is a hydrometer. That's what the, you use to take readings, and I'm gonna demonstrate taking readings and when you say take readings, it reads the alcohol content? It reads the, the gravity of the wine. Uh, it will tell you the starting gravity, uh, and that it will kind of, you're gonna need that gravity to determine how much alcohol is in the wine when the wine is done. Uh, and there's a formula inside this hydrometer for that. I have a hose. Uh, a rod, that's what you need to transfer the wine. This little thing here helps you uh, not put any sediment in your finished wine. Keep all the sediment. I have a spoon. We're going to be using one of those. And uh, a test jar. And that's yeah. what you put the hydrometer in? Yes. So all the equipment needs to be cleaned and sanitized, um, and then it's ready, uh, bacteria-free, ready for the juice. Once you open it, there's a little pouch. This pouch contains all the additives that you're going to add to the wine, the yeast, uh, the preservatives, the grape skins, uh, your mesh bag, everything, instructions, everything in this. And you can use this, uh, this bag to put your, uh, your readings, and they all go in this uh, instruction sheet here. So we're gonna pull this up. As I say, you got a mesh bag for grape skins. Okay. We have oak, which is- uh, Does it tell you what- American, American heavy oak chips. So we know this is gonna be a, a heavily oaked wine. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice and bold. We got the yeast here. Mm 
Okay, so this package contained the, the additives that we're going to be using before fermentation. We have the yeast, we have the sulfites, acts as a stabilizer. We get your preservatives to preserve the color, and it's um, usually necessary for aging. If you're about to age your wine, you need preservatives, otherwise you, your wine won't last. And then the clearing agents, which are made of uh, uh, seashells, um, made out of um, crustaceans. So anybody who is allergic to fish or crustaceans, this have can a affect problem. them. Yes. Um, and then you have your benotine, which is a, uh, a type of clay additive that helps um, attract all the yeast and put it to the bottom of the fermenter after the fermentation is done. So it doesn't done. stay up top. So your wine clears. Oh. So we're just going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will be ready to go on to the next stage. Please, uh, please join us then. Welcome back to Sitting with Sally. Today we are making wine, and it's Baco Noir. Simo, what are we doing next? Okay, so we're going to start this kit. Um, we're going to put the juice in the fermenter and add all the additives, and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing here. First thing, we're going to put the juice in the fermenter. We've got a sanitized fermenter ready. This one is a 12-liter kit, so it's not that heavy. And there is a way of doing it. Okay. Some people, they take the bag out of the box. And I keep telling them it's not necessary. If you keep the bag in the box, you'll, you'll have a better, better uh, handling of the juice. It is the most gorgeous deep red ruby color. Yeah, very nice color and it smells good. got a very particular smell to it. The color is deep. Uh, it's almost a purple red. Purple red. Yeah. The juice usually tells you a lot about the wine you're going to have. Darker is the juice, bolder the wine you're going to have. And then you can also smell the profile from the juice before you even pitch the yeast. Mm -hmm. You can smell the spice, you can smell it's some of the flavors. It's smelling really good. Some of the flavors. Mm. Yeah, you can smell the smoke already in there. Okay. Yes. Usually I like to maximize my uh, so I rinse the bag as well. some water in the bag and just rinse it. And you mentioned you use special spring water? I do. The water that I use is called Sadi Spring and it's local. The local water from the ground, full of minerals and the wine love water that have minerals. It helps as a nutrition for the wine during the fermentation process. Yeah, you will achieve a better wine using better water. Water matters. Okay, we get this done. The second thing we're going to do is add the benotine, which is a clay additive. Sanitized spoon. 
just going to give it a little mix. And how many liters uh, do you have of the uh, juice? This kit is a 12 liter kit. It means I have 12 liter of juice. And you can see here the level of the wine. And you're going to add water to it? Yeah. After I, I add the, the, the oak and everything, mm -hmm. we're going to top it up to six gallons, which is 23 liters of wine. So every kit gives you up to 23 liters of wine, which comes up to, up to 30 bottles of 750 ml of finished product. So the Benotine is all, uh, it's all in there, it's all nice. And mixed in the juice. The second thing is we're gonna add this uh, medium American oak chips. Now they're, they're toasted oak? They are toasted. Now that's yeah. gonna give some of a smoky flavor. Yeah, here you go. Oh, are they ever toasted? Wow. They are. Very. Yeah, nice, yeah. nice toasty uh, flavor. It will, this oak will bring all the flavors up front and it will help give the wine its, its profile uh, after aging. Could we? You want to do it? Oh, sure. Yeah, we can give it a mix. Stir, stir, toil and trouble. Yeah, a little bit of stirring. Yeah. You can never over stir. Just, you know, slowly till all that oak is incorporated into the juice. Is that good or right? That's good. That's okay. perfect. Okay. So now we're going to top up the the fermenter to 23 liters because this kit has grape skins and they're dry grape skins. So 23 liters of juice and then we're going to add the grape skin pack after. I can see why you wear an apron. Yeah, well, I usually I, uh, I'm careful. Yeah, you do it slowly. Wine making is not a race. It takes, uh, it takes time and patience. There we go. We're close. 19. One more liter. And we're good. Mm. There we go. Perfect. So we got just close to twenty three liters. Okay. Can you please give it another stir? Sure. So now we're going to mix the juice with the water that we add and the yolk. And before we take, put the grape skin in, which is the last step, we're going to take a gravity rating just to, it will tell us uh, what's the, the starting gravity of this wine. It will help us through the whole process after the wine is done, determine the alcohol content and make sure that the wine is, has finished every step. And gravity can, can help you achieve that, that perfect result. Okay, so we have a hydrometer here. Can you hold this, please? Sure. Thank you. And then we have a sanitized teeth. So we're going to take a sample of this, usually 100 ml.
so over 100 mil, and then we're going to put this hydrometer in there. The finishing gravity of this wine should be around 0,996. And is it starting where most grape juices start? This one, because it's, it's a full body, juice is thicker, so the, gra the starting gravity will be higher. More to towards 1.1, 1.099, close to 1.1. This one is just at 1.1, which is perfect. So and we're going to take another short break, and if you can uh, join us again as we continue with our winemaking. Sitting with Sally. Today I am making, or I, Simo is making Baco Noir, and we are at adding the grape skin stage. Yeah, we're at the, the step where we have to add the grape skins. So we have a little container here with the, the mesh bag in it. I just, it uh, it's, it's sort of like a cheesecloth, but thicker. Yeah, it's like a sock. Uh, like a sock, uh, yeah. With holes in it. And not every wine has adds grape skins. No, uh, there's certain kits, uh, kits that don't have grape skins. There is other kits that have grape skins, depending on the kit. This Baco Noir comes with grape skins, and it's a, it's a plus. So I have the chance to demonstrate how the grape skins uh, are put into the wine. Uh, it's, it, not, it's not hard. And it's you just a... It, you say it's a plus. What does uh, what do the grape skins do? The grape skins they add they add deepness to the wine. They add color. They add tannins. They add spice. They add flavor to the wine. So the size of the grape skin pack vary depending on the kit you choose. This one comes with a small pack of grape skin, and they're all dried grape skin. You can uh, hydrate those grape skins with uh, boiling water. It will uh, help uh, release, the flavor. release the flavor from the grape skins to the juice. It will give you a little superior product. You don't have to do that. Uh, we're not going to do that today. So we're just going to take this grape skin and put it in, uh, in the fermenter. I recommend to kind of put like some sort of a weight on the grape skin pack to get it at the bottom of the fermenter, it will help achieve, achieve uh, better results. So it's all the way in there? All the way in the bottom. So, you know, any, any weight can, can do. Uh, usually, okay, I'm going to put this in. Gonna, here, you can push it all the way down. And it should. Uh, Once a bag gets some water in, it should. Yeah. So now we've got grape skins inside the the fermenter. We have 23 liters of juice. We got the oak. We got the benotine. So now it's ready for the yeast. Pretty much. This is this is all for step one. Other than yeast. So we got a. A sanitized lid. So we're going to take the spoon out. And we're going to put the lid on before we put the yeast. This is the yeast. And then we have, we got the airlock. Airlock is sanitized and filled up halfway. With water. With water. And that's going to let the carbon dioxide bubble out. Yeah. It will uh, prevent any oxygen from going into the wine and all the CO2 escaping from, from the wine. So you put it in. OK. So now you've got to put your fermenter in a dark room at about between 60, 68, and 72 degrees. Fahrenheit, which is the ideal temperature to, to brew wine, to make wine, to ferment. 
and um, step two will be ready. So how long does it stay in the fermenter? Usually two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, for step one. And then I know what goes into this, the carboy. Yeah, so after the, the wine is, is done fermenting, usually you take a sample and you measure the gravity. And step two gravity usually have a range. So as, as soon as your gravity is inside that range, you can transfer. You know it's ready. Re ready for step two means you, you take it out of the fermenter and you transfer it into a carboy for step two. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put this in a nice uh, warm room, which is between 68 and 72. And then we're going to put the yeast in. And we're going to close the lid. And from there, it got to sleep for two weeks, ferment. The yeast is going to help. All the good things it's going to Yeah, the, to do. the yeast is going to turn all the sugar in the juice into alcohol. And, and that's then, why you need the warm for it yes, to do the fermenting. Absolutely. Yeah. The yeast got to range. Um, if it's too hot, you will kill the yeast. If it's too, too cold, the yeast will become inactive. So between uh, that 66 and 72 is the ideal temperature to brew the wine. And once you put the yeast in, how soon does it start working? If the temperature of the juice is ideal, which is around 70, 72, the yeast start working right away. Mm -hmm. So we're going to measure the temperature of the, of the juice right now. I know my water is a good temperature. The juice was a good temperature, which is room temperature. And ideally, it should be at 70. OK, so my juice is at 68 right now, 69 Fahrenheit. So to achieve a better result, make sure that your yeast starts right away. Let the juice sit for about half an hour to an hour to go up by about two degrees to about 70, 72. And then we're going to pitch the yeast. Okay. And so then two weeks after when you determine that the fermentation is done, you transfer it to the carboy. Yes. That second stage. Yes. How long does it stay in the carboy? Well, this kit, they recommend uh, step two. Um, they recommend that step two uh, they don't do step two, so they, they go straight to step three, which is degassing. So with this kit, you kind of, uh, you skip a whole step, which is the wine setting in the carboy in between, once it's done fermenting, till it's, it's been degassed and cleared. And, and quite often in step two, the wine's quite cloudy. In step two, usually the wine, it's still cloudy. Yeah till you clear it after degassing. So this one, though, this one's different. Baco Noir goes straight to step three? It goes straight to step three with, uh, with RGS uh, Crew International um, kits. You skip that step two completely. So once step one is done, you can rack into a carboy and degas your wine right away. And degas means you take the extra carbon dioxide out? That's right. You, 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 uh, you free the wine of all the carbon dioxide that it's, that's been building toward, um, during the fermentation. Because that's part of the, what, the yeast byproduct. Is. Exactly. Yeah. So when, when the sugar, when the yeast consumes the sugar, it produces alcohol and carbon dioxide. Okay. I use a drill attachment uh, that spins and, um, you know, at high speed and, and, and gives you an optimum result when it comes to degassing. It's faster, faster uh, degassing. And then once it's degassed, then it's cleared, and once it's cleared, what happens? Once it's degassed, then you got all those. Uh, so for degassing step one, you add sulfites, which is this path here. You add the sulfites, and you degass. So once your wine is degassed, you got to make sure that your wine doesn't have any bubbles anymore. Then you do the... the preservative, which is the potassium sorbate, and then you add your clearing agents, which is the, the two clear packs that I was talking about earlier. The shellfish. That are made from shellfish. 
So you add the small one, you mix, you add the second one, you mix, and then the wine is clearing. Then that's pretty much it till bottling. And uh, we did some bottling uh, of uh, Pinot Grigio that I made. That's right, yeah. Uh, and as I say, uh, after the wine is degassed, it sits till it's ready to bottle. So depending on the kit, usually step four is about, it's ranging from two weeks to four weeks to six weeks, depending on the kit. And filtering it helps it clear, and so it's got that nice... Uh... Uh, filtering the wine, it's a way of polishing the wine. Uh, make sure that your wine is clear, free of sediment, uh, not as harsh. So it will kind of smoothen the wine after filtering. And I know when we bottled the wine, uh, Simo, you took some um, of my Pinot Grigio and you were twirling it in a glass, and you were looking for its legs. Okay. Well... Are, yeah, what are legs? Legs are, uh, you know, drippings in the glass after you sour your wine, and it tells you uh, a little bit about your wine. Uh, it tells you uh, if your wine got a good body or not. It tells you uh, if it's sweet or dry, um, and also the alcohol content. So there is a different things that you look for. Once you see the legs, you can interpret those legs as, you know, and Good you, or bad. You were saying that uh, a sweeter wine has shorter legs? Sweeter wine usually have tendency to have shorter legs because of the sugar content in the wine. Makes it a bit sticky. Sticky, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So now we're, we're ready to pitch the yeast pretty much. You find the, the best spot for your wine. Dark room, nice temperature, steady temperature. Not too much change in temperature. Uh, not close to a heater, for sure not. Um, if, if your room is, um, is kind of on, on the cooler side, you can use a blanket to wrap your fermenter on a cool night. And usually the fermenter, the fermentation, once the fermentation is started, it will keep that temperature in the 70s. Uh, because it's going to give off a bit of heat too. Exactly. It mm -hmm. generates its own heat. Well, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to when this wine is done, and hopefully I'll get a taste of it. Absolutely. Um, it's a very good um, wine. I had it before, uh, and it doesn't need much aging, uh, and it's local. Thank you very much for demonstrating all this. You're welcome. It's, it's, it's been a fascinating uh, learning experience. Thank you for having me, Sally. Enjoyed it very it's much. It's a pleasure. And until next time. Cheers. Thank you.